This paper takes as its starting point the port of Calais in northern France. The music that you are hearing is the music of Afghan migrants waiting at the harbour side, hoping to effect illegal entry into the United Kingdom. It is the night of Nowruz, 21st of March, which is the Zoroastrian New Year, and it is being celebrated with singing and dancing around a drum which was brought to this encampment by activists in order to make this moment possible. The camp has a certain poetry to it, existing as it does on the railway lines that used to lead directly to the ship side, but now no longer. It is a place of comradely togetherness, but it is also a place that is subjected to repeated police raids, brutality, harassment, tearing up of the migrants' tents, and basically treating the migrants as if they were subhuman, as vermin, as persons of no account. Located as it is, at the closest point to the United Kingdom, Calais has for centuries played a pivotal economic and political role. For 200 years, between 1347 and 1558, it was actually part of England, and was ruled as such, and was a major contributor to the English economy. In World War II, the town was flattened by German bombardment on the occasion of the siege of Calais in 1940, prior to the evacuation of Dunkirk, leaving a landscape of total devastation. Calais is also historically a place of humiliations. In this picture, we see the fort, which was originally built by Edward III of England, who laid siege to Calais for a year, a siege which was only ended in the ritual surrender and humiliation of its citizens, a moment which was commemorated in the famous statue by Rodin of the burghers of Calais coming out of the city in their chains. The camp that you see here doubled in size between February and our second visit in March of this year, 2014. At the present time it has passed from being majority Syrian to being majority Afghan. And although the conditions are necessarily makeshift and primitive, these tents are well constructed, often cosy inside, and sometimes sophisticated in their construction here with breeze blocks and pallets which are brought in by local activists and well-wishers. Here the migrants bide their time and wait in a situation which is securitized to the maximum, the border between Calais and Dover where barbed wire is the order of the day, although in this picture local activists have actually cut down the barbed wire that was erected by the mayor around the migrants' food distribution centre. And what has been striking in recent months has been the willingness of migrants to come out and demonstrate publicly for their human rights, for the right to the freedom of movement and for personal liberty. So here you have the basic ingredients, the migrants, their tents, their waiting, the ferry, and the lorries coming and going, in which the migrants are hoping to make their illegal entry into Britain, a process humorously commented upon in this harbour-side wall painting near to the migrants' camp, a migrant smuggled aboard a lorry and heading for England. At the same time that we were there in March for Nowruz, the BBC descended on Calais to report on the illegal immigration. The lengths of desperation that people will go to are shown in this video clip, filmed with an infrared camera under a lorry at Calais, as two migrants climb onto the lorry axle in the hope of staying there for the duration of the crossing to England. These two migrants had in fact been with us two nights previously, dancing around the fires of Nowruz. 
Unsurprisingly, a network of support has grown up in and around Calais to help the migrants, to supply them with tents, sleeping materials and clothing, to provide them with a free daily meal at six o'clock each evening, to make it possible for them to go and have showers in a nearby locality, and to document and bear witness to the excesses of the local police and municipal authorities who detest the presence of the migrants, currently numbering about 700 in their town. Equally, recent months have seen the emergence of another organization, Sauvons Calais, Let Us Save Calais, ostensibly an organization of local residents who are concerned and worried about the occasional outbreaks of violence among rival migrant groups and about the constant presence of migrants camping in many places in and around the town including along the sand dunes and beaches in what have become known locally as the jungles however the virulence of the sauvon calais slogans which include a call for a ban on migrants, a ban on the no borders activists, a phrase which has become almost a swear word in some quarters, and a ban on what they call, quote, corrupt journalists, suggests that it is not, as it would appear at first sight, a middle of the road organization, but rather an organization of the far right. Here you see two young men in the leadership of Sauvon Calais wearing the t shirts of that organization. And here you see them photographed without their t-shirts, where the Nazi insignia tattooed on their chests say it all. The stakes in Calais are radical. We are talking significant spaces of social strife, both actual and potential, particularly in view of France's sharp move to the right in the March 2014 municipal elections. We are also talking the larger ethical, philosophical questions of fortress Europe and its ever-troubled relations with its migrant others. These are fundamental issues of our time and at a local level it is also a question of another world is possible and perhaps also another Calais is possible. And into this fearsome melting pot steps another troop of interventionists, the Soas Cayley Band, here pictured on board the Pride of Burgundy, en route for Calais on very stormy seas in February 2014. The, um, the Soas Cayley Band has always had a, a commitment to doing Cayley beyond borders. We like to take our our music beyond borders. Um, to that end, we tour uh, every year, once, twice, three times. We've been to Italy, we've been to Istanbul, Turkey, we go every year. We were in Iraq uh, last year in Kurdistan, and uh, today we're going to Calais in France. And the reason why we're coming here is because Calais is a very special place for very many historical reasons. It's a, it's a border area that has been disputed and contested over the centuries. It used to be English for about 300 years, um, so a very long and interesting history. But more specifically, it's interesting to us at the moment because it is a place where migrants gather in the hopes of being able to get into Britain. And when I say migrants, I mean um, asylum seekers who are in serious danger of their lives in their own countries. I mean also economic migrants who are coming looking for work. And I also mean people who are coming from civil wars and famines and situations of distress around the Mediterranean, North Africa, and out in the Near East. They gather here. They're treated in the most appalling racist fashion by the local police. Um, beaten up, their tents torn up, their sleeping bags sprayed with pepper gas, um, that sort of thing. And in no way is this 
just a French thing. This is this is policy that is engineered at the high level between the French government and the British government, because actually their Sangat reception centre that they had was shut down about 10 years ago because the right-wing British press put such tremendous pressure on the government of the day. So it's a place where England and France have a hand in it. And as I say, it's a liminal border area. So we bring our musics here. So we came over. I have to say, it was absolutely bitterly freezing cold, sub-sub-zero. And um, we went down and we played in the feeding, the food distribution area here, which is called Salam, where volunteers from Calais come every day and bring food, uh, supper in the evening, for up to 200 migrants at a time. We came down, we played our music, um, and it was generally well appreciated, and then we went on our way. And then we thought, that we would come back again, which we did last October, and did something a little bit more serious, because we had heard that volunteers and no borders activists in Calais had organized a music festival. And the idea of this music festival was that the people of Calais, instead of peering at the migrants from behind their car windows and those kind of distant alien objects, people of Calais could actually meet together with migrants in one place and have music and enjoyment. One week before the concert was due to start, the mayor of Calais, Nathalie Bouchard, who is right-wing, they took over from the communists a few years back, she banned the meeting. She said it was political, banned it from the so-called Maison pour tous, the house for all, and that festival did not take place. We came over at precisely that time because we wanted to participate in that festival because we believe in this solidarity among human beings. Um, the festival did not take place, but there was a small demonstration which went through the town, which we joined and were part of as a band. And the Rhythms of Resistance band, a samba band from Lille, they came up. And uh, yeah, we marched, we demonstrated and filmed, and it was a very good experience.
allow me to participate with you by saying something at least. Yeah. Okay. It's true that our greatest glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time you fall. Every time you fall. Therefore, we must look forward to bringing about a completely fruitful outcome from the communications of life that have been planted so as to prevent some of us from having a good respect in the near foreseeable future. Even if today it is not so good as some of you want it to be, tomorrow might respond to this ambiguous, this ambiguous request of yours and you will begin coming across your missing self-entities because you yourselves have made that dream so as to come true. Have a quite normal life is the main preoccupation for all men. The build up of your nice future is your top priority. Never give up. Then kiss the lips of life through sipping her cup. Thank you so much.